Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Nicole from iPad Calligraphy. There's many elements that make up a really good lettering piece, so the lettering itself obviously being one of them, but other important elements are colour and texture. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. We'll start with the completed sketch in Procreate and I'll show you where I source my colour inspiration from as well as how to get a helping hand if you're not a super confident illustrator. We'll also look at cool tips for how to easily add texture to your lettering and how to work with colour throughout. So if that sounds good, let's get started. Here's the finished product of what we're going to create today. There's some really cool texture grain on the different elements and the color palette brings it all together really nicely. I've used a couple of different packs in this piece. I've used the Grid Builder pack to help with the layout of the lettering and another pack called Rough and Raw, which we're going to take a look at. You can follow along with this tutorial using Procreate's default brushes, but if you want to use the exact brushes I've used, I've put a link below. And this will also save you 20% on these two brush packs as well. So let's Let's take this back to the sketch and I'll show you how it's done. I'm in Procreate here and this is my sketch. I used the Grid Builder brushes to compose my lettering. So I've pulled in some of the different grid shapes and used that to guide my lettering. If you want more info on how I use the grid shapes to build a composition, there's a link in the description below to another video you can watch after this that will show you how I put together a composition. So another thing I've done already is chosen my color palette. I get my color inspiration from Pinterest and also Instagram. And there's a good Instagram account called Colors Cafe, which I like to use. They just put out some really cool color palettes whenever I'm looking for inspiration I go to this account on Instagram another thing I did was look on Unsplash so this website is great for stock imagery and I looked on Unsplash to get some of the elements that I wanted to put in the background and I just traced over those so that the line work was nice and tidy right so let's get coloring so I know that I want to use this pink for the background so this is just literally one layer with the colors splashed on there and I'm going to take a sample of that pink just by tapping and holding and you'll see that pink is now in my color circle here so I'm going to add a new layer and just bring that to the very bottom and I'm going to fill the canvas just by sliding the color wheel in there so now I've got that really bright, vibrant pink next we're going to go into the lettering so I'll show you just how I like to use texture brushes first of all I want to turn down the lettering so that it's a lower opacity so we can see what we're doing and to do that you just tap the little n and turn the opacity slider down Okay, so we've got our layers turned down and I can see clearly. The only other thing I might do here is just turn the grid down as well. So I'm just gonna flatten that because I've got everything where I like it. And I'm just gonna turn the opacity down so it's a subtle reference, but I still wanna see it. As I go on this layer, I wanna sort of tidy the artwork a little bit and make sure that the lettering is right on those guidelines. So I will keep that reference layer of the grid still on. And I'll go back to my new layer here. And I'm just gonna start by using this dark blue. I might change the color, I think, later, but for the moment, this is going to be easy just to, to really clearly see what's going on with the pink background. So we'll come in here and you can see this texturizer brush does a lot of the work for you. You don't need to add any of the lines yourself. It's, it's already creating just by a simple smooth stroke. It's creating that really textured look. And I turn the size up and down depending on the size of the stroke, the thickness of the lettering. So I like to just do it in one stroke if I can. That just makes things quicker and easier. But just keep in mind, you wanna keep your thick strokes in the lettering the same as each other. So you want those to look pretty similar in size. You don't want some really thick and some really thin. But then there's thinner parts of the lettering. I'll just turn the brush size down slightly and I'll just speed this up for you. Okay. 
Okay, great. So that's all of our lettering with the Ripalizer brush done now. And you can see how effortless that was just by making the stroke itself. It, it makes these texturized edges, which work really well for lettering. And it also has pressure sensitivity as well, which was great for these more script styles. Now what I'm going to do is actually color the lettering. So I'm going to turn off my lettering guide here and I'm actually finished with the grid as well. So I'll turn that off as well. Now we have our lettering and an easy way, a good trick to give you about coloring lettering really simply. If you swipe to the right, you'll see you get these little squares in the background. That indicates that this is now alpha lock. And now I can color that layer in one go. So I'm gonna choose this kind of turquoise color here and just tapping on the layer will bring up the menu and I'll choose fill layer. And for my script, I'm also going to color that, but I might just choose white, I think will work quite well with that. So I'll do the same again, lock the layer, and then just tap on it and fill lettering. That just simply fills the lettering layer and excludes the background so that you can really colorize very easily. Now I'm gonna add a drop shadow here, just briefly, just to the lettering layer. And to do that, I just slide to the left and choose duplicate. And then I'm going to move that layer below the other lettering layer. It's still alpha locked, so I can recolor it as well. So I'm just gonna choose maybe this dark blue. We'll try that and alpha lock fill layer. So now I have that dark blue in the drop shadow there. And I also wanna add a drop shadow here to these script style lettering. So I'll just duplicate each of those layers and I want those to be in this dark purple. So you tap and hold to get your color, fill layer and fill layer. And now I'll select them both at once. So now I've got them filled, but they're behind that top layer. So what I wanna do is just move them so that they've got the same spacing of shadow. So to do that, you just select them both at the same time, just by sliding to the right and then move them together. So now we've got a good, good bit of contrast. So before we move on, I'm briefly gonna show you what I would do just to correct these shadows slightly. So I'd, I'd prefer that to be filled in. So to do that, we just need to unlock the layer. You just simply swipe to the right and then just come and fill in any areas that are gaps. So this is the edge of the shadow, this edge of the purple, and there are some areas that you need to just fill in. But I'm gonna move on now and we're going to color in the objects around the desk. So I'll start with the hand. So I'm gonna come in here and I wanna show you a little trick with this. So at the moment, I've got the hand and the pencil on two different layers, the sketch. And now I want to actually create the hand layer as a reference. If you're like me, it took me the longest time to work this out, what this actually does, but I'll show you now. So now that we have the reference layer, I'm going to create another layer under that. And now I'm gonna come in just a light cream tone for the hand. And then now that I've got this as a reference layer, I can actually just slide that in. You see how easy that was. So the advantage of doing it this way, it means we can just fill the layer, even though there is nothing on this particular layer to tell it to color drop into an area. So we can still have our line art and background on two different layers, but it just means that we're able to fill that layer separately. So I'm gonna do the same for the fingernails. I'll create another layer on top. And I think I like this kind of, not quite as dark purple as the shadow, but this layer here, we've got that on top. I can just drop the color straight into the fingernail area because it's a closed shape and I'm using a reference layer. So reference is really handy if you wanna use that. Back to our shading. So what we're gonna do now is create a layer on top of there, and I'm going to go back to this color just by tapping on it and holding. And now I'm gonna bring the darkness down just because we wanna add some shading and shadow to the hand. And there's some great shading brushes in here, but one I really like is this powdery brush. So I'm gonna turn up the size of that you could do it straight on the layer if you're feeling confident. And I'm gonna slide to the left just to lock that transparency. And now I can come in and even if I go outside the lines, it won't shade outside the lines. So that's a, that's a handy one to know is just locking that layer, the alpha lock, it's called alpha lock, just means that you don't need to, you won't be shading outside of that shape. So you can keep it all within that shape. 
excellent cool so that's looking good we'll just move on to the pencil now so I'm going to choose another a new layer under the pencil I'm going to choose the charcoal brush for this one that's nice and textured so I'm going to come in and just color in the pencil and leave a little bit of space and you can always use your eraser to just remove any areas that you didn't mean to color just so those lines are really clear on top so there we go that part is done now too cool so I think the headphones probably don't need much shading but what I can do is just fill those with white and just choose fill layer so they've got a white on there and I might just use the powdery one again and just bring the size right down and just add a little bit of shading to the headphones just to give that a bit of depth but we we don't really need too much detail in that area so that's starting to come together we can fill in these other objects in a moment but I just want to show you some of these other textured brushes because they work really well for adding some texture into the background I'll choose the light blue color here and I've created a new layer above the background so I just want to choose one of these random crumbles it's called and if we actually turn that up quite large and then just sort of paint across the background you can see you get this really cool kind of mottledy texture so that's nice for adding just a bit of depth to your work and interest um, there's also another one called more crumbles which is good for this as well so that's like a lighter kind of dot so I'm going to add a bit of that and in the light blue and then choose like this darker blue as well to sort of contrast with it and then once you've got once you've got a few speckles on there you can even just turn the opacity on it down a little bit if you if you want to make it more subtle and now I'm just going to add a few kind of random little design motifs around we'll use this noisy pencil brush now just want to add a few sort of elements around the page so just some dots and then also some stars so I like to draw stars like this you often see this in in sort of lettering style and this rough pencil has a really cool texture to it so it makes it really simple you don't have to kind of add any extra layers or of texture over the top it's got it inbuilt in the brush Cool, there we go so that's looking nice with some little design elements around the place so now I'm going to color the glasses in and we'll use the same method as before we'll just turn that outline layer to reference create a new layer and I'm going to move this behind the outline just so we can see what we're doing and I'm going to just color those in the same blue as the lettering so I can now I turned my color palette off but I can just to sample from the image itself now and just color in the frame of the glasses just by drop filling and as as the same as before even though we're on a completely different layer to the outline because I've created that as a reference layer you know I'm able to really easily just drop color fill straight in there and I'm going to create just a little bit of texture on that lettering so I'll create a new letter layer above and I'll change onto this savage brush which has a really textured kind of look so if I turn that up you can see that's really textured so I love this brush as well so I'll change back to a pink so we'll use the same pink as the background so just hold your sample there I'm on a new layer so I'm going to come in and just fill around here and it sort of looks like that sort of tortoiseshell texture so if we just create a few of these mottled kind of areas that'll look really good with the frames of the glasses so our last object to fill is the compass I'm going to turn that onto a reference layer add a new layer as before and just drop it below and we'll start just by filling it with a background so I'm going to use this light blue that we had before and just drop fill into that area to create a light blue background now I'm going to swap to this scratch me brush which has a really scratchy sort of texture and I'll move to like a darker color I want the texture to just fill inside the compass area so what I'm going to do is just select that fill layer and then move on to another layer above it and now I can just dot around and it will just fill in the selection 
and not outside of it. So once I deselect there, you can see it's just filled in the selection. And I'll just drop it back a little bit because it's nice. It's a nice sort of subtle texture to just use in the background. And finally, I'm going to add another layer on top of the lettering back to the noisy pencil brush. And we're going to choose white as the color. I just want to add a few highlights to that lettering because these just really accentuate the text and just add some really nice interest to the lettering. And there we have it. So we have a beautiful lettering piece, really textured, looking really cool. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and you're excited by using lots of texture and color in your work. I would love to see what you come up with. Don't forget you can grab these two amazing brush packs together in a bundle and save 20% off thanks to the design part. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.